I now request our guest of honor, Srimati Justice T. Meena Kumari Garu, Chairperson, Human Rights Commission, to please address the gathering. Sri T. Meena Kumari Garu is a retired High Court Judge of India. She was the first Chief Justice of Meghalaya High Court and also the first woman to be appointed as State Human Rights Commission Chairperson. She previously served as the Judge of Andhra Pradesh High Court and Patna High Court. A lady of great substance and standard, she is a value addition to our meet today. Today's Chief Guest, Sri C. H. Vidya Sarao Garu, Honorable Governor for Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, Sri Bandar Datta Trayagaru, the uh, Union Minister for State of Labor and Employment, Sri S. Jaipal Reddy Garu, Professor S. Ramchandran, Vice Chancellor Usmania University, and Sri Shamon Garu, Chairman, Element Committee, and Professor T. Manohar Garu, Convener, and other guests on the dais and off the dais, and the old alumni students present here. I could see a good number of old students here, and also the student fraternity of Usman University. Ladies and gentlemen, press and media present here. Today's subject is enriching Usmania with a global vision, which is a little bit topic to be discussed on a platform like this. But having given the subject and the theme, I thought I could express my views and also my feelings about the Usmani University because I was also an old student of Usmani University being a law graduate and also the ex-judge of the combined state of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh and also as the Chief Justice of Meghalaya and presently now the chairperson of a different state of Tamil Nadu. Though my previous leaders and the speakers have talked much about this renewed university. I thought it's my ardent duty to narrate and recall some of the futures of this Usmania University. Usmania University was founded in the year 1917 with the help of Chief Architect of Mahabud Ali Khan and Nawab Sawar Jang. It was established and named after the seventh and last Nizam of Hyderabad, Nawab Mir Usman Ali Khan, and it is the third oldest university in South India and started with an initial enrollment of 225 students. Within the first decade of its establishment, medicine and engineering faculties were started in the year 1927 and 29 respectively, which were accredited throughout the Indian subcontinent and the women's college was started in 1926 and the Arts College was commenced in the year 1936. That is the glorious history of our Usman University and I wish to remind all of you that notable alumni of Usman University included major politicians and also judicial field, bureaucrats, a lot of IAS, IPS officers, sports person and other legal luminaries. A few of them are the former Prime Minister of India, Sri P. V. Narsin Rao Garu, and former Governor of Reserve Bank of India, Yaga Venugopal Reddy Garu. Of course, we could see on the dais the old students of this university, Mr. Jaipal Reddy Garu and C. H. Vidya Sarra, who is the present Governor of Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, and other luminaries, dignitaries here who are one of the old students the, and senior advocates like Subodh Markandeya and other old students 
like Mr. Justice P. Jaganmohan Reddy Garu was elevated to Supreme Court and also other judges who are elevated to Supreme Court and also other judges from Telangana, other adv senior advocates who are very much enriched with legal knowledge who add on the dais of the judgeship of the the then Telangana and, and I mean on, on, the, on the High Court it was, it was, it was as one <coughs> and there were and I, I would be failing in my duty to say that Justice Jagan Mondetigaru was the Vice Chancellor of Usmania University for some time, perhaps, perhaps if I am correct in 1973. I also wish to remind that the notable persons like Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the father of Indian Constitution, and Dr. Manmohan Singh, they have been conferred with the honorary doctorate degrees during the years 1953 and in 1994 respectively by the historic Usmania University. So long as, so far as the subject is concerned, I wish to suggest that the road to becoming a world-class university can be attained only to the trinity of talent, resources, and management. Hence, Usmania University must brim with meritorious students and top-notch faculty, mobility of students through measures like choice-based credit system is important. Mobility of faculty is also necessary. Secondly, Usmania University must become the magnet for talent by sourcing the facilities or the faculties from abroad. They can deliver education in a global setting, enriching their scholars with international and intercultural skills. Thirdly, it should be borne in mind that world-class institutions can be developed only with adequate financial resources, and hence steps have to be taken for mobilization of funds through various means. Another vital prerequisite to become a world-class institution is a governance model that encourages creative thinking, scientific scrutiny, and critical reflection of different faculties to the global to attain the global vision. It enforces a mechanism of accountability that enables institutions to respond to changes in the external environment with agility, thereby promoting competitiveness among the students. In a nutshell, to make the Usman University education with global vision, Usman University should attract academically talented students from around the state of Telangana provide them with an intellectually demanding, research-informed education, which prepares them for lifelong learning and with the capability to contribute as global citizens. This many university should value staff by developing their careers in a supportive environment that enables them to achieve the highest possible standards in all aspects of their work, because the staff whoever may be the professors, the lecturers from the lower strata, they are the foundation for the university to make the students to achieve their goals. Ways to become global hub is infrastructure at Usman University must achieve global standards. Programs that Usman University offer must have relevance and universal appeal. Need to adopt outcome-based education and have the adoption of contemporary technologies for teaching and learning, international faculty on, on in the faculty list, research that we conduct must address not only local problems, but must have global outlook and must meet global standards. Funding for PhD and postdoctoral fellowships, social issues like cultural adaptability, environment, safety, and basic infrastructure issues to be looked into. I think it is very pertinent to quote Swami Vivekananda about the education. If education is identical with information, the libraries are the greatest sages in the world and encyclopedians are the rishis. I unquote. I have to mention this because the Usman University Library is known for its the standards which it maintains with regard to the encyclopedias and I think the students
must feel the encyclopedias as rishis and they must achieve the global vision. In the light of the, and it is high time that the head of the institutions must strive, if not already done, to see that the education by which character is formed, strength of mind is increased, intellect is expanded, and the students' community emanating from university, while standing on their feet, can also face the challenges thrown by life in the globe. The head of the institution should make the university adapted, updated, and modernized in all aspects with all amenities to suit the global vision of the education of the university. I quote Benjamin Franklin here, an investment in knowledge weighs the best interest. I unquote. I feel that the great leaders of the who have emphasizing about the future of the nation and also they must come to the rescue of the students as the future of the nation lies with the youth of the country and I am confident that the students of this Usmana University will fulfill the responsibilities and I request the heads of the university to see that and also to achieve the theme of education of the university in global vision as the students of Usman University and the future lies with them and I hope and also I wish all the best to the Usman University and I thank leave of all of you and I am very grateful to the organizers of this function having invited me to share this dais. Good evening. Thank you for sharing your valuable suggestions, madam. At a juncture where Usmania University is talking about women empowerment, we are really proud and elated to have our own alumnus of the alma mater in such great positions. I think she deserves a big round of applause from all of us. Thank you for being with us, ma'am.